Bionicle, the line of toys that saved LEGO from bankruptcy and provided hours of fun with its amazing lore and intricate character designs. So of course, LEGO banished it into the Shadow Realm and instead focused on franchises that no one cares about anymore and shows geared towards kids. I'm not trying to be mean, I love LEGO. I can't buy any of their sets because they're overpriced as fuck, but I love what they stand for. I'm just bitter because I really miss Bionicle, even though it's a franchise with multiple movies, series, comic books and toys under its belt, there aren't that many video games trying to retell the legend of a Toa. Yeah, sure, there's Mana Nui Online, the best point-and-click adventure game made in Flash, yada yada yada, we've all heard of that game, but what about something more action-packed? Well, there are a bunch of titles for various consoles, but today I want to talk about something a bit more obscure, and that is Bionicle Heroes, a third-person shooter published by Indus Interactive in 2006 and developed by Traveler's Tales. Yes, the ones making every LEGO game under the sun. These guys are experts, so this must be good, right? Well, unfortunately, it's the most mediocre LEGO game I've ever played, which is a shame because it had insane potential, given the lore and different elements of the series. But alas, all we have is an incredibly repetitive experience that fails to fulfill anyone's expectations. Let's dive deeper into it and see what Bionicle Heroes is about. On the mysterious island of Voya Nui, the powerful mask of life has fallen into the hands of the Paraka. The island's peaceful inhabitants have been transformed into vicious creatures. Only you can use the powers of the masks to wage an epic battle and defeat the Paraka. So apparently, this game has an intro cutscene. I've never seen it, which is strange because it's the only plot we're gonna get throughout this whole game. Still, we're not missing much since the story is painfully simplistic and not canon to the events of the official series. The game takes place on the island of Voya Nui, where the evil Piraka have taken control and transformed every inhabitant into a mindless monster. We play as a random Matoran who has appeared out of nowhere and for no good reason. Thankfully though, a villager named Balta informs our hero of the situation and gives us a mask so we can become a Toa and save the day. And that's exactly what we do, as we defeat all of the classic Bionicle monsters like the Borak, Visorak and Vaki. After destroying all the Piraka, we fight against Vezon, the mastermind behind everything and the one that controls the Mask of Life. A mildly interesting boss fight later and Vezon is defeated and with a mask in our possession we finally restore peace to the land of Voya Nui. And that's it, that's the whole plot. No, seriously, that's it. Any exciting interactions with the bosses? Nope, they just fall down a lot and get broken apart. I think it was supposed to be funny but it felt more like watching Lego Live League to be honest. Alright then, are there any meaningful plot points, dialogue scenes, twists and turns or anything really to make the story just a tiny bit more involved? Nope, nothing at all like that. You just get short cutscenes of the bosses doing something stupid and then they die and it all repeats until the end of the game. Throughout the adventure, you unlock detailed biographies and lore for each character, but it doesn't matter, cause none of it is portrayed here. It's just a mismatch of various Bionicle properties thrown in without rhyme or reason. There is nothing to dig into and even as fan service, it's pointless because all the characters are sallow and dim-witted and nothing even comes close to the true splendor of a Bionicle legend. What an utter disappointment! 
I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. Bionicle Heroes is an ugly game, even for its time. The textures are muddy, the colors are muted, and the graphics aren't very pleasing even at the highest settings. It's a shame because the environments are varied and all the characters look very accurate and do a great job portraying all the classic LEGO action figures. There is a wide variety of monsters, heroes and items from the series, so if you love Bionicle, you'll definitely get your money's worth out of all the creatures in the game. The problem here is that the environments don't feel LEGO-y enough, if that makes any sense. Eventually, all the levels blend into each other, making the experience monotonous and the gameplay a blur. Oh, and by the way, would you like to hear something really funny? This is actually a patched version of the game. The high fidelity graphics, the improved textures and the enhanced shader support were all thanks to a mod called Myths of Oyanui. Now, do you wanna hear the really fucked up part? I've been showing you a version of this mod without Bloom this whole time. This is how the game actually looks with the original Bloom. Jesus Christ, my eyes! This is the most excessive use of Bloom I've ever seen in a video game. It's like I'm staring directly into the sun. I'm sorry, but this is absolutely unplayable. I'm not even kidding. Oh well, I guess they did it to mask the game's bland and blurry textures, but still this is way overboard. It doesn't even matter because the game still looks like a fuzzy mess. Surprisingly, the music on the other hand goes pretty hard. Every track is awesome and does a superb job accompanying the action and the feeling of its area. Even though sometimes the hero mode soundtrack became too grating to listen to over and over again. And since there's no voice acting besides a few grunts, all you'll be hearing is the sound of your weapon, explosions and the music on repeat. After a while, even the music becomes monotonous, despite its awesomeness. And that's it really, regarding the game's presentation at least. Despite it being an adaptation of the LEGO Bionicle series, it doesn't utilize its elements to their fullest potential. As a result, the game looks like a complete eyesore unmodded, and its levels are a complete bore to go through. When it comes to the gameplay, Bionicle Heroes plays like a classic LEGO game, at least on paper. Every Toa has a unique weapon and abilities they can use to interact with the environment and gain access to secret areas. You defeat enemies and collect LEGO pieces to improve your Toa's armor, weapons and abilities, as well as unlock bonus levels and other stuff. Combined with a thrill of third-person shooter combat, this should be nothing short of exciting. And it is, to be fair, for like the first half hour, then you realize that the game has absolutely nothing else to offer and the sadness starts to creep in. But let's take it from the beginning. We have a hub with 6 different areas, each corresponding to a different piraka. Defeat all of them and then you get to fight Vezion and finish the game. Each area is comprised of 4 levels. In the first level we fight a Raxi. In the second level we obtain a Zamor Sphere. In the third level we fight against a random evil character from the series and the fourth level is just the boss fight against the area's Piraka. Every level and area play out in the exact same way, without any variation whatsoever. But what about the levels themselves? Unfortunately they are incredibly monotonous as well. All you do is fight enemies until you collect enough bricks to fill up your hero meter and enter hero mode. During hero mode you're invulnerable and can interact with gold lego pieces that help you progress through the level. 
and that's it, that's the entire gameplay loop. Whether you're just exploring, fighting enemies or even defeating bosses, you always have to grind for that damn hero meter. It's a total pace breaker and it's sore every time. Sure, you sometimes switch to a different DOA to build something or interact with the environment, but these puzzles are too short and far apart to make the gameplay more involved and varied. The boss fights are especially disappointing because they all play out pretty much the same. They have one or two attacks, you have to kill enough enemies to get to hero mode, and then wait around for ages till their shield deactivates so you can hit them. Endless, pointless padding, that's what this whole game is. And the worst part is, the game is way, way too easy. You lock on automatically to any enemy you wanna shoot, the enemies are lethargic and barely do any damage, and the game constantly sours you with hearts and masks that replenish your health. And even if you do die, you just lose a Toa, you still have all the rest to work with. Besides that, Toa armor doubles your health and hero mode makes you invincible. Seriously, the real challenge here is to actually manage to lose. It's impossible! Ok, so the main game is the most boring and mindless experience ever, but what about the extra goodies? LEGO games always have a ton of unlockables and they're always fun to fuck around with. Well, you can unlock entries for every character and item in the game, if you like reading that is. Yeah, I know, super exciting. Other than that, there are some bonus levels and the Piraka Playground, where you just unlock cutscenes of the main bosses doing stupid kindergarten shit. It's not funny in the slightest. It's actually infuriating because you have to spend an insane amount of money just to have the privilege of seeing the Piraka kick each other in the balls or dumb shit like that. You can also unlock them as playable characters, but they're nothing special. And that's the game in a nutshell, pretty much. Did you know that it was meant to be a first-person shooter, but the ESRB thought it was too violent, so they switched to a third-person view? Yeah, I don't get it either. I don't think it'd make a difference, since this game is an extremely bare-bones experience. The levels are repetitive, the shooting is automatic, only a few Toa have good weapons, the extras suck, and you can never die. I understand that these games are meant for kids, but this is way too much. Even the original LEGO Star Wars was more challenging than this. This is a clear insult to the intelligence of every LEGO fan, plain and simple. Bionicle Heroes was a pain in the ass to play, as well as record for this video. The game would constantly crash for no reason and have glitches up the wazoo, while I also had to alt tab just to make the widescreen work. It hasn't aged well, and thank god for the Myths of Voyanui mod that fixed a lot of the technical shortcomings of the game. But even with all these improvements, it's just not a fun game to spend your time with. It's not bad by any means, I mildly enjoyed myself going through the levels and destroying everything in my path mindlessly, but the levels are repetitive, the humor is childish, and there is nothing that takes advantage of a classic Bionicle license. It's a very boring and run-of-the-mill experience, and probably the most disappointing LEGO game I've ever played. However, other versions of this game are more interesting, like the Nintendo DS version, which is a proper first-person shooter. It's nothing revolutionary, but it's slightly more engaging, I guess. So, if you want to experience Bionicle Heroes, I'd suggest playing the DS version instead of the main one. But if you're really interested in the original version and want to play it that badly, you should definitely download the Myths of Oyanui mod, unless you love getting your retinas burned off from the insane bloom this game has. All in all, Bionicle Heroes is just another mediocre LEGO game and a huge waste of potential. And that's all I have to say about that. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, leave a like if you did, comment your thoughts below and subscribe for more stuff, you know how it goes. You can also support me on Patreon or become a channel member for early access to my videos and other perks. Have a great day and until next time, take care and have fun.